Hi everyone, this is Karen. Yesterday I posted a video teaching you how to create shapes with patterns inside, cuttable patterns inside, um, and borders around them with Silhouette Studio. And I promised that I would show you how this can be done using shortcuts a lot. So that's what I'm showing you today. First thing I'm going to show you is how to do a simple letter. Um, what I've done is I've converted all of the files I used yesterday, all the background files from Studio Format to SVG Format, so that you'll be able to import them into Shortcuts a lot. You can also use them then with any cutting system. So they are in the same directory as I posted on my blog yesterday for the cut files. When you click that link, you'll be able to get the SVG files as well now. First thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to open up um, the pattern file I'm going to be using, or the background file. And to do that, I'm going to choose File, Import, because in Shortcuts a lot, you need to import SVG files. So I've got those in my digital cutting files under Backgrounds. Um, and for the letter, I'm going to do the same thing as I did yesterday. I'm going to use the zebra stripe. So I'm going to open up that background. Then I'm going to click the text icon to type a letter and I'm going to type the letter S. So I'm just going to drag this out and make it bigger and I'm going to change the color so that you'll be able to see because otherwise if I do red on red you won't be able to see what's going on. And again whatever colors I do here they're just for the benefit of being able to see clearly what I'm doing. Turns out that using shortcuts a lot for this is even easier than doing it with Silhouette Studio. So what I'm doing now is I've selected the S and I'm dragging it and putting it on top of the pattern. Then all I need to do is select the letter. I'm going to right click. I'm going to click Appearance and then Add Shadow Layer. I'm going to click Inset Shadow and I'm going to make it a little bit thicker than this. I'm just going to, I'm just going to click the up arrow and you'll see that there's quite a difference. It'll be easier to see. Then I'll click OK. Then what I need to do is click the inner piece in this case. And you can see which piece you're clicking in Shortcuts a lot. It's a little bit easier than with, with Silhouette Studio again. I'm going to show you what I mean. If you hover over the background, you're going to see that there is an outline where the cut lines are. If I hover over this inner piece, you're going to see that there's a black outline around the inner S. And if I hover over the original portion of the S, you'll see the black outline around that. So what I want is this inner portion of the S, and then I'm going to press Shift, and I'm also clicking on the zebra print. Then I'm going to click Path, and I'm going to choose Intersection. So now it looks like it hasn't done anything, but this is quite magical actually. All you need to do now is click and drag a box around everything, right click, and then choose Merge. And it's done. It's as simple as that. Many fewer steps, so this is much easier to do. Okay, so that's the S, and if you wanted to change color, all you do is you come up to the color palette, click for the fill, and change the color. To change the line color, it's called a stroke, it's, and that is the actual term for it. It's a stroke. So if I wanted to change that from red to black so that it's the same as the fill, then I just click the stroke color swatch over here, and then I'm going to click in the color that I want and click OK, and then it changes it. So that's the S done. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do an ampersand with a chevron shape and I'm going to split it because somebody was asking about this earlier today and it's the same idea. We're going to have that pattern chevron inside it, but we're all, I'm also going to teach you how to split either a letter or a symbol or whatever. Um, so in this case, I'm going to import my chevron background piece. So that's under backgrounds and then chevron and I'll click open. Just put that right on my mat. Then I'm going to type an ampersand. Whoops, not a percent sign, an ampersand. Okay, and that's still in that same font, so that's a nice thick font. 
I'm going to click my selection arrow so that I can select my ampersand. I'm going to hold down the shift key so that it drags it out proportionally and make that nice and big. It might be a little bit too big. Yeah, it's too big to fit on that background. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. That should be better. I'm going to change the color. So it's easier to see what I'm doing. And I'm going to drag this over on top of the chevron pattern. Same thing again. With the ampersand selected, I'm going to right click and I'm going to click appearance, add shadow layer. I'm going to choose inset. I'm just going to bump that up a little bit. And I could type in a value here as well. I could just type in 0 0.10 if I wanted to. And that would make this a little bit thinner. So once that is done, I'm going to click with the inner portion of the ampersand selected. I'm going to hold down the shift key and click on the chevron pattern to select those two pieces. Then I'm going to click path on the menu. Okay, so there's a reason for that. Okay, and I'm thinking that the reason, I'm going to undo a couple of steps to move the ampersand back over here. What I'm thinking is that this needs to be grouped or merged so that it's recognized as one piece by the software. And then I'm going to move this over here because Shortcuts a lot will only let you use the path functions when there are two pieces selected. So I'm going to right click again. I need to select this amp the ampersand. I'm going to right click, choose appearance and then add shadow layer. I'm going to choose inset shadow and I'm going to type in a value of 0 0.10. I'm going to click OK. So that's done. I'm going to select the inner portion of the ampersand. I pressed shift and clicked on the chevron pattern. I'm going to click path up in the menu and I'm going to choose intersection. Again, it looks like nothing much has happened. I can press command A because I'm working on a Mac. If you're working on a PC, that would be control A. Right click and choose merge. And this is done. So now all we need to do is split the ampersand and that's super easy to do. I'm going to create a rectangle and to get a rectangle, usually it's the rectangle that's displayed here first. It would look like this, but whenever you've got a little arrow here on the side of the icon, it means that there are more choices there so that if you click and hold, you'll see more choices. So I do want the rectangle and I'm going to drag it out the width that I want it for my ampersand which I would say would be about here. And I'm going to choose the amount that I want to split for the ampersand to be able to fit enough text in there for that to work properly. Except that with it placed here, you don't see part of the ampersand that makes it an obvious ampersand. So maybe I'll move it up this much or maybe I'll move it to here. It looks better here, I think. Let me see. Or even further down. It's a little bit tricky with an ampersand. Let me see here. No, that doesn't look good. You have to decide on your placement. That is not going to show that it's an ampersand. So I think maybe the best is here, but then I'm going to drag out the rectangle a little bit further. And that's about the best I'm going to be able to do. So I just want it to look centered. It actually was probably centered, but because there is this on the right side of the symbol, it doesn't look centered the way it was. So that looks okay. I'm going to just take a copy of this and then I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to move that over to the side so that I can use it later to have the correct width for my bars that I'm going to put across. So now that that's done, I'm going to select everything. I'm going to come up to the path menu and I'm going to choose back minus front. So that cuts away what was in this area. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the rectangle and I'm going to make it 
thinner. This will be one of the bars across here. So I'm deciding on the width I want for that. And then I'm going to right click and copy and then paste. I'm going to then take the first one and bring it over here so that it is actually I'm going to work on this portion because this is where I need to determine where it's sitting and I need to make sure that it's overlapping this bottom these bottom bits so that it will weld then I'm going to bring this piece in and I'm going to leave it on purpose f too far right so that it's visibly too far right and I'm going to place it where it's overlapping but I'm going to overlap all of those little bits so that it welds those in and it will look better than if I were to do it this way then you have those little bits there and they're really not adding anything to it. I think it looks better like this but I mean this is your personal preference you decide what you like better. So I like that and then what I'm going to do is choose these two pieces by clicking on the first piece and then pressing shift and I'm going to click on the second one then I'm going to come up over here and this is in the position and size panel the one that shows the two arrows here and I'm going to choose left align which is this icon over here and both of those are now aligned to the left so now all I need to do is select everything and I can either right click and then choose path and union and that has now welded that permanently together or I could have come up to the path menu and chosen union from there. So that is done and I'm just going to change the color of that so you can see it a little bit more clearly. And there is the ampersand split and you can add these bars as thin or as wide as you like. That again is your preference, your personal preference. And I guess that's all I really need to show you because that's how simple it is to do these things with shortcuts a lot. So I hope all of this has been helpful to you. Thanks so much for watching and please be sure to subscribe to my channel.